Hi, so in this lecture, I'm going to talk about the RC circuit, resistor capacitor circuit. So you can see the contents here where I'm going to detail the mathematical model of the RC circuit. Then I'm going to move on to the time solution. And then I'm going to detail some very important properties of that um, time solution. So the system gain and the time constant. So the RC circuit, you can see down here. So we've got a resistor and a capacitor in series. And then here we've got a DC power source. So you can understand more in terms of how this works and operates. So after this lecture, you'll be able to understand the operation of the charging and discharging of the capacitor. You'll be able to understand how to drive the, the first order linear time invariant audio differential equation for the RC circuit charging and discharging. Then how to determine the time solution for this. And then the significance of the system gain. So you can see them here and the time constant. These are not going to mean much to you right now, but by after this after this lecture, you will be able to understand the significance of these two properties from the time solution and what this means. Focusing on the RC circuit, what you'll notice here is we've got voltage in. So we've got a DC source here with a symbol. We've got here a resistor, capacitor given here. We've got a digital multimeter, you can see they're given a DMM across the capacitor and then this is used to measure the voltage out what you notice is we've got this switch arrangement here where it's effectively got two states it's got charge and discharge so when the input voltage is applied and the switch is on charge a current flows and what will happen is the capacitor will charge up this is illustrated on this graph here where you can see here in blue here on the legend and then on the graph it's given here where this is effectively given by five volts because the units is in volts so the voltage in by this this source here is five volts and the output which is effectively the charging that you can see i'm measuring here across the capacitor is the charging up of the capacitor so you can see here on the red line on the graph you can see here it charges up to the five volts it matches effectively the input voltage right so what happens if i change the state of the switch from charge to discharge so you can see now i've i've moved the position i've still got the digital multimeter so i can effectively measure the 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 voltage across the capacitor so when the input is removed and the switch is on discharge as you can see then the capacitor effectively discharges what it does is it discharges because you can see initially when it was charging the the current flowing this way you can see now it's flowing the opposite direction so the discharge so the current flow is effectively um reversed and it discharges through the resistance value um with as i said the current flowing in the opposite direction what this is going to look like it's going to effectively look like in terms of the graph so initially you had this step of effectively five volts now you've got the step which is effectively zero volts because you've, you've um, removed the charge and then what you can see here now is this graph here that describes effectively the dk or, or the, the kind of the, the drop in the in the voltage over time this here this diagram you see here is effectively what we're going to describe in this lecture mathematically so i'm going to show you the mathematical model behind these this rc circuit for charge and discharge then we're going to then get look at the time solution and we're going to look at some important properties behind the 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 time solution model in terms of how you can effectively use the model or the form of it to predict what this graph's going to look like in terms of the time it takes for the rc circuit to charge and discharge so now focusing on the mathematical model as i said in the introduction what we're going to focus on is a first order linear time invariant order differential equation for the rc circuit initially for the charging so we're going to look at how this equation is derived so we first all just start looking at some general equations that are useful for the initially to model the charging so the voltage drop across the capacitor which is denoted v subscript c is equal to the charge of the capacitor over c 
which is the capacitance of the capacitor. The voltage drop across the resistor here, and if we apply Newton's um, Ohm's law, this is equal to I multiplied by R, where we know that effectively I, which is the current, is effectively the rate of change of the charge with respect to time. So the charge changes with time, and obviously here we've still got the resistance value. So if we consider an equation for one here, so this top equation we just determined, and making Q the subject, so Q is equal to effectively V subscript C multiplied by C. What we do then is then substitute this into equation for two. And what this will give us is this equation here. You can effectively see V, C, C. It's effectively given here because we've just replaced that, well, we've replaced Q with that. What I've then done here is just effectively, because obviously R multiplies by this top part here. What I've done is I've just basically taken these two terms and just moved them to the other side of the equation. So it has this kind of um, tidier form and probably more convenient form for what we're going to do. So resistor capacitor and effectively the d by dt, so the rate of change of the voltage across the capacitor. So if we apply Kirchhoff's law to this, to this um, configuration of the RC circuit, voltage in here is equal to V subscript R, voltage across the resistor, plus VC, which is the voltage across the capacitor. So if we recall from equation 4.3, so this equation that we've just derived, and if we substitute this equation into this above um, formula here, where VR is effectively just replaced by, by this here. So what we're going to end up with is V in, so V subscript in is equal to RC D, well, rate of change of the, of the voltage across the capacitor, plus VC. Obviously, we haven't done anything with that. So that's the equation there that we've derived. What we can do is we can rearrange this to put it into something known as the standard form. Standard form pretty much just involves making the leading coefficient 1. So to make the leading coefficient 1, what you need to do effectively is divide through by whatever the leading coefficient value is. So in this case, the leading coefficient value is RC. So if you divide through by RC, you can see obviously it's, it's now a value of 1 here but we're going to end up with effectively VC over RC, or in this case I put 1 over RC VC, is equal to V subscript M over RC. So that's again convenient notation to use. So there what we've derived is the ordinary differential equation, which is first order and it's linear time invariant for the charging process of the RC circuit. So initially when we saw on the, the one of the initial slides where we saw the charging process of the capacitor, that there, that order differential equation there effectively describes that process of the capacitor charging subject to this voltage in. So now if we move on to developing the order differential equation for the discharging process of a capacitor. Okay, this is quite straightforward because it's effectively equation 4-6. So the order differential equation we derived earlier for the, for the charging. However, you can see the condition on the right here effectively just becomes zero. Where the initial input condition is the charged capacitor. Okay, because if you remember when you applied the, the step and then removed it, you had the obviously the charging process which is the mathematical model that we derived previous, and then you had the discharge here, and the initial condition is the already charged capacitor. Diagram's not great, but I think it explains what I'm trying to get across to you. So now what we have is the mathematical model for the charge and also for the discharge for the RC circuit. So now if we focus on the time solution for the discharging of the capacitor. So this is obviously based on the order, the first order order differential equation for the RC circuit as we've just arrived. 
what we're going to do is we're going to use an integration method to get the time solution known as separation well separation of the variables so what we're going to do is effectively separate the variables by moving all the v subscript c values to the left hand of the equation and to the other side of the equation move the rc term here so it gives the following what i'm then going to do is integrate both sides of this so this symbol here is for integration I'm going to integrate both sides of this equation and I first of all start off by integrating the left hand side. So if I integrate the left hand side of this equation, what it's going to give me is the natural log of V subscript C plus C1, where C1 is just my constant of integration. And this is just going to then equal to well, the right hand side I haven't touched yet. But if I do do the integration on the right hand side, what it's going to give me is this here when we get minus t over rc plus c subscript 2 which again is my constant of integration so hopefully you're familiar with this method and this this is kind of okay at this point so we continue on the time solution with the discharging of the rc circuit the constants of integration that we, what we determined on the previous slide, so I denoted them C subscript 1, subscript 2, we effectively combine. So C subscript 3 is equal to C subscript 2, take away C subscript 1, to effectively give the following equation here for 412. The inverse of a logarithmic function is a exponential function. Therefore, the following is given. So, what I get here is effectively you can see the logarithmic function here disappears. So V subscript C of T, so the voltage over the capacitor changing with time, is equal to this exponential here minus T over RC plus C subscript 3. As this exponential term here, we effectively this constant here, so minus 2 over RC. And then the second constant here, c. What we can effectively equal that to is two exponential terms, and effectively break up these two constants. So this first exponential minus t over rc, and the second one to the power of c, whereby then we get this equation. So the voltage across the voltage changing across time with the capacitor is equal to these two exponential terms with the corresponding power there. As this e to the power of c3 is just a constant, what we can do is we can just replace that with c. So in this here, we can just replace that with c. Um, and effectively, well, you can see all I've done is I've replaced it with c and then just moved the c to the front of the equation here. Where c is a constant, that is determined from the initial conditions. So if you recall, the initial condition was the voltage in at t is equal to zero. Therefore, the following can be given. So effectively, C here is just replaced with V subscript IM, which is the voltage in. And that there is our time solution for the discharging of the RC circuit. So you know, at the initial video where we saw something that looked like that, the discharging when the step input was removed, you saw the discharging that there, that, mo that model there describes that phenomenon. So if you move on to the time solution now of the, well, firstly, we start with the order differential equation for the charging process. But what we're going to derive is the, is the time solution for that. So if you recall from equation 4, 6, the order differential equation for the charging process which is given by this. So it's very similar to the previous equation other than the fact that you've got this this part here to the right of the equation so again if we do separating the variables by effectively what we've done is we've moved all the voltage across the capacitors and the voltage in to the left hand side and then here we've got the rc component on the right hand side of the equation if we integrate both sides of the equation so we can see here again integration on both sides first of all we end up with the integral of the left hand side because i'm going to start off with doing the integral of the left we get the natural log of, and then in brackets, the voltage in, take away the voltage across the capacitor, plus this integration constant here. 
and obviously we haven't integrated the right hand side yet but if we do integrate the right hand side what we end up with is d over rc plus c subscript 2 and that's obviously what we saw previously so these equations here look quite similar to the ones we saw before and the only real variation really is that we have this voltage subscript in or the voltage in here so the constants of integration to so c1 and c2 are combined so in the same process as before so c3 is equal to c2 take away c1 and it effectively gives us this equation so if we take the inverse of the logarithmic function here what we're going to end up is just v subscript in take away v subscript c of t if we take the logarithmic um, inverse um, of the right hand side what we end up with is an exponential function so you can see it's equal to e to the power of minus t over rc plus 3c3 as this exponential here where it's got these two effectively this i'm going to call it constant here and then this constant here what we can do as we did before we can effectively break these two exponential terms apart where there's the constant here and the constant here it's mathematically the equal therefore it gives the following for the equation as this um, e to the power of c3 is just a constant this can be just replaced with c um, and with c determined from the initial condition v subscript in so the voltage in at t equals zero therefore we can effectively give the following so we can just replace this here with c and c is effectively as it is determined from the initial condition which is v in so you can see there we effectively end up with v in there so that's all great if we rearrange the equation to make effectively because what we want to make is the voltage across the capacitor the subject and it's this is a function of t which is time to make this a subject and simplify and it gives the following so if we effectively uh you can see here just if we were to sort this out so if we were to what we do in here so if we were to effectively move this to the other side of the equation then move this across to here so we'd end up effectively with v v in take away v in and then this exponential term because obviously we've got v in uh, common what we can do is we can put these brackets here move v in outside the brackets multiply by one um and then that gives you vn and then it's going to your vn multiply by the exponential term that there is your time solution for the charging of the rc circuit so that again there is a very important equation and i'm going to explain a little bit more what the significance of this equation is so if we move on to now looking at the system gain and the time constant so for a first order audio differential equation these two properties especially the time constant is of real importance and the time solution of a general first order audio differential equation is given here where y of t which is your effect of your output the output change in time is equal to k and then brackets one take away e to the power of minus t over tau where k is your system gain and tau denotes the time constant so this formula that you see here for an or for your for your time solution for your first order order differential equation appears pretty much in a way well, appears in a lot of real world examples so when you ever you're modeling a lot of for example chemical processes for a tank a lot of them tend to be first order um process it processes and you can effectively mathematically model them with exactly this form here of the equation the thing that varies though is what what the system gain value is and also what the time constant is here okay and that's pretty much it there's two coefficients there will, will tell you pretty much what the response time or you know for example how long it takes for the system to charge or discharge those two properties well, well those two properties will tell you kind of how long well the, the time constant will tell you how long it takes for the system to charge and discharge and the system gain will tell you pretty much the final value the system wants in state state and they're things that i'm going to explain to you more now 
So if we recall equation 416 and 425, so effectively the time solution that we had, well, we determined for the discharging and for the charging, where V subscript in denotes the system, um, syst um, denotes um, the system gain, and RC, so resistor capacitor, denotes the time constant here, which is um, the tau symbol that's used. So just to kind of get you back thinking. So again, this looks similar to what we saw on the first slide where effectively we had, you know, this charging process. So when a kind of a step input was applied, the capacitor was charging up. Uh, well, you can see there in this case to a value of one. So that means that effectively, a, in this case, a one volt step input has been applied and you can see the capacitor charging over time um, and it's kind of you can see here then it ends up kind of plateauing out and there's no rate of change there's two important properties of this system response transient this is when the response and you probably notice i'm using the word response because that's what i tend to um, call this sort of thing it's like a dynamic it's changing with time and it's what i call a, a, a system response or a model response so the transient part here is where there's effectively change and the steady state part is where the response has settled. So effectively you have no rate of change in the system. So, you know, when I when I said before, rate of change is D by DT, which is rate of change. There is rate of change here because obviously the voltage is changing with time. So the voltage here, VC, voltage across the capacitor is changing with time. At this point here, the voltage is effectively well it's equal to one but the rate of change is obviously if we look in here the rate of change is zero because there, there obviously is no rate of change because the final value of the system when it's in set when it's in steady state is one so the time constant all right so if we're looking at that system response it's quite interesting then if we're looking at these two equations here and you're probably thinking well what does this mean well at the moment to be honest we're, we're looking at this one because this one's the one that we use for charging and this graph down here is for charging. But the time constant, what it does, it provides information regarding the transient part of the system response, okay? So if you wanna know anything about the transient part, so to the left of my, my line here, you look at the time constant. One time constant, so one value for the time constant will effectively tell us how long it's gonna take for the system to reach 63.2% of the final value of the system, i.e. the final value of the system when the system's in steady state. So in this case, you can see the system's in steady state with a value of one. So it's effectively going to tell us how long it takes for the system to get to 63.2% of that, of that one volt, which is 0 0.6632. So it's probably approximately there. So it's going to tell us the time period that it takes to get to 63.2. Right, if you want to approximate 99%, so effectively, well, swing along the lines of there, five tau will tell us that, all right? And you're probably looking at this, this equation here and you're thinking, well, how's that gonna, what's, how's that gonna tell us? Because when you actually put some numbers in, um, you, you kind of will realize, because just to kind of refresh you, the RC value here is your tau. So whatever you pick for your resistor and whatever you pick for your capacitor value is going to determine what the tau value is and it's going to determine how long it takes to get to 63.2% of the final value of the system. So you're probably thinking, well, a low resistor value is going to do this, a, a capacitor value is going to do this, it's going to take this time, that time, but these values do. So five tau. So effectively five multiplied by RC is going to tell me how long it takes to get to 99%, which is there or thereabouts, you're, you're in steady state. So this is very, very important. So we can look at, we can effectively determine the time solution of an audio differential equation. So we can use, a, we can effectively resistor and capacitor, work out the time solution, and then determine the, the tower value, which in this case is RC, and we can work out how long it's going to take for that capacitor to charge up because we know that five tau is pretty much it's it's pretty much nearly fully charged so system gain 
um, is important, but it's not so as important. But this provides the final value of the system output. So YSS in this case, I've called it. I could have called it, to be honest, um, V subscript out SS, but I think this is fine. So in the simplest case, if the voltage input is one volt, then the final value of the system output in state state will equal to the system gain K. So pretty much in this particular system, how, how a capacitor charges, you effectively provide it. It's, it's, it's got a, a potential difference of, I don't know, five volts, and it's going to take a given amount of time for effectively that capacitor to charge up to five volts. Okay, so whatever your, your system gain is pretty much the same as whatever your voltage input is. Okay, so it's nice and straightforward for this system. If you look at other systems, you'd see it's slightly, slightly more difficult, slightly trickier. So if we consider equations 416 and 415, 425, sorry, both are subject to one volt um, initial input. Um, you can see the two equations here. Again, all we'll focus on here is the initially the charge. So this table here, so if we're looking at the charge equation here, and again, this is all in general. I haven't put any numbers in yet, so it's probably, it's going to be probably when we go through the tutorial questions, it's going to be a little bit more obvious because when we put some numbers in, sometimes things become a bit more obvious. But this is here just to make things a bit more clear. So one time constant is equal to RC, as I said previous, five time constants, five RC. And as I said to you, 63.2% and 99%. So you can see there, one time constant, five time constant, which is effectively 0 0.632, five time constant is 0 0.990. Okay, so obviously like a smaller time constant value is going to mean that smaller time constant value is gonna mean that you effectively have a faster system response. So say for example, if I had an RT value of one, it would mean that one second it would take for me for me to get to 63.2% and it would take five seconds for me to get to 99%. If I had a, a time constant of 0.5, it means it takes me 0.5 to get to 63, 2.5 to get to 99%. And obviously the time constant is, is determined based on the resistor and capacitor values that you initially select. The same relationship occurs for the discharging. So if we look at this discharging time solution here, we can see the RC part is here. The same relationship occurs. Um, however, the starting point here is obviously the initial voltage. And you can see here the, the decaying of the, of, the, of the charge, where again, one time constant, five time constants. So you can see there, and it's actually 63.2, 99%. However, obviously the relationship is slightly different. It takes one time constant to get to effectively 63.2% of obviously the where it's going down to being fully discharged. And here you can see five time constants is effectively at 99%. There are obviously other time constant values that you can see that I've put on these, but the main ones really are are are, are um, one time constant and five time constant. They're the most referred to and most used ones. So again, the same relationship, if I select, if I have kind of a, a time constant that's large, it's going to mean that it takes long for my system to obviously decay. And obviously a small time constant, it's going to decay quicker. Be aware that obviously within a particular circuit, the, the kind of the charging and the discharging will obviously use the same resistor and same capacitor because charging up the capacitor and then obviously um, remove, well, discharging, it means that obviously the, the current will flow through obviously the same resistance value and out of the same capacitor. So obviously these these pretty much this the kind of the slope for the charging and the discharge and it's kind of like the the opposite if that makes sense. So just to kind of show you here, a range of RC values are explored for the charging of the capacitor. So I've gone from 0 0.5 to 3.5. Okay, I'm not putting any like values in, there's no units here because I'm just putting numbers in into the mathematical model. So you can see here, 0 0.5, as I told you, and as you expect, this is gonna give me a faster system response to an RC value of 3.5. Okay, it's kind of obvious. So what you're seeing here is, 
it's giving me a fast system response. It means that the smaller time constant is effectively charging up the capacitor much, much quicker. So it's effectively achieving the final value, you know, when you're in steady state, much, much quicker. The system gain is constant. OK, and that's kind of obvious. It's not obvious, but it's it's for this particular case, it's actually quite nice. It means whatever voltage you put in, that's effectively what is going to be your final value. Once the system is given enough time to settle into steady state. Um, and yeah, the system gain in this case, no, K is one so just in summary i've gone through the the operation of charging discharging a capacitor so this whole idea of having a resistor and a capacitor in in series voltage in and when the circuit here is complete the, the voltage causing a potential difference then current flow through the circuit I've added on a, a digital multimeter here to effectively measure the voltage V out across the capacitor. So measure the voltage across the capacitor and you get this kind of this charging phenomenon over time. Then once the, if the switch is switched down to here, what then you get is this discharging phenomena here. OK, so it's going to discharge over time. So you do you kind of you have the current flowing obviously in this direction. You can see here if we were to change the switch to discharge, what would happen is then the voltage discharges through the capacitor, through the through the resistor, and obviously in the opposite direction, the current flow. The first order linear time invariant audio differential equation for the RC charging and discharging have been derived. So these initial equations, they're based on kind of Ohm's laws, Kirchhoff's laws, and some of the various equations that we've seen in previous lectures. We've developed these audio, these these quite simple but effective mathematical models mathematical models great but what we're really interested in is what exactly is happening to that model given kind of a, a given resistor or capacitor value so how long is it going to take for the system to charge how long is it going to take for the system to discharge the only way we can do that is if we look at the time solution so we obviously derived the time solution and part of deriving the time solution was that we detailed the system gain which in our case is voltage in so the system gain is effectively equal to, to the voltage in and the time constant so the time constant is equal to the resistor multiplied by the capacitor and as i said previously the time constant is really really fundamental for understanding how long it's going to take for the system to charge and how long it's going to take for the system or in this case, when I'm saying system, I mean RC circuit to discharge. Okay, a small RC value is going to mean that the system charges, the the, the resist, the capacitor charges fast and discharges fast. A large RC value term is going to mean that it takes longer, obviously, for the charging and the discharging. Okay, and obviously, when I say RC, I mean the resistor value and also the capacitor value. And if you just recall tau value which is equal to rc that tells us how long it takes for the capacitor to charge or discharge to 63.2 percent and then 5 tau which is equal to 5 rc because because in our case tau is rc that's going to tell us how long it takes for the capacitor to charge to 99 percent and discharge to 99 percent so in conclusion there's quite a bit for you to get your head around but i believe if we go through some tutorial questions and put some numbers in i feel it will make a lot more sense so if you have any questions please feel free to contact me thank you